Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Startup September Day 24. Um, Startup September, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, it is a month long celebration of the startup ecosystem by the startup ecosystem. We've been having such sessions uh, with different partners for the past 24 days. Uh, we've uh, had around 30 plus sessions and hosted around 80 plus partners and uh, with the intention to help entrepreneurs in their journey with some uh, useful uh, content. And we are once again here with uh, another such uh, useful uh, subject. Uh, uh, without further ado, uh, could I ask uh, Shayujia to... Yeah. Hey, hi, uh, Shayujia. Um, Cool. Thank you for the introduction. Um, if I can share my screen now. Yeah, you can. I have given you the co-host. So for those of you who do not know, uh, Shayuja is the head of startups business at Netcore and she'll be moderating the session today. Uh, uh, over to you, Shayuja. Thank you. Uh, so uh, thank you. So a uh, quick intro. Currently, I am heading the startups business unit at Netcore. Uh, Netcore is a customer engage a customer uh, sorry Netcore offers a suite of products uh, to improve customer engagement uh, through which we could uh, improve retention and conversion. Um, before this, I uh, I ran a startup from 2014 to 18. Uh, uh, it was a fashion rental startup. So uh, just to say that I understand. Uh, uh, where we found us are at, I, I went through most of the same problems uh, all of you might be going through uh, currently in your startup journeys. Um, so uh, today we are here to talk about um, uh, 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 one of the uh, major problems we face post, you know, the, uh, we launch our uh, product. So um, for us, the startup uh, journey begins after I know uh, when we start building our minimum viable product, maybe before that, we also start talking uh, on social media and start marketing about our product. And my, meanwhile, we build our uh, product and we launch our MVP. And once we launch our MVP, we start running ads. And now we face our first problem. I'm running ads. I have users coming in, but they are not engaging with me and they are not converting. Right. So this is uh, a problem that each of us in each of our startups journey, we definitely face. Um, so now the question becomes product market fit, right? And product market fit has two aspects to it. Uh, one is if people do, do people even need my product or need the solution that I'm offering? Um, that's the big question, right? And the second part of this uh, becomes, uh, you know, am I communicating my product uh, and my solution clearly to the users, right? Even let's say for if uh, we don't achieve product market fit or we uh, our product is not something that people want, we can get to know this also when we start communicating with our users from, during our journey from minimum viable product to product market fit. And once we achieve product market fit, uh, we are in a place where we can step the pedal on growth. And now what happens is we have more new user segments coming in and we, now here start again facing the problem of having to communicate differently with each of these uh, new different users. And uh, we, we are having to understand the new user segments and their patterns on our website and app. So the uh, uh, first step for any of us on our startup journey comes to getting to product market fit, right? Product market fit uh, uh, tells us that our product is needed. It also, I mean, from there we start, we, we, build a mission that can generate uh, 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 consumers from visitors. So what are the signals that, uh, what, what are the indications that we could see that our product has achieved product market fit is clearly our users in, in, uh, engaging with, our, uh, with my product, with our product, our users taking the solutions that uh, I'm offering, our users coming back to us again and again, and are they willing to talk to uh, their uh, loved ones about us, right? And the associated metrics, uh, like uh, maybe time on app, the number of pages viewed, or the number of features they use on our app, the frequency in which they uh, use our uh, solutions, maybe buy a product or watch a video or take a class, 
uh, or uh, maybe if we are in the fintech industry, uh, buy cryptocurrency, do they do it again and again? So these are uh, sort of the indications and metrics that indicate product market fit. And these are the same metrics that also uh, contribute to growth and revenues. And uh, so now we, we talk about, like, if we talk about what is communication, right? So communication is something that is two way, which means we, we uh, make sure we communicate what the product is, what the solution is, and how can the user navigate on the website, navigate on the app, et cetera, as clearly as possible and as individually as possible, which, which is you know for different users, we might have to uh, talk about different things. We might have to talk about different flows on our app or websites. And the second part of communication is listening and understanding what our users are telling us, maybe through feedbacks or even by analyzing you know, what uh, users are doing on our website or app. And the third important aspect of it is also that we take this feedback, we listen to what is happening and are, we are ready to do something about it. We actually take actions on what we understand from our users, right? Now, um, we don't need surveys to really prove that, uh, you know, communicating with our users and communicating uh, personally and contextually with our users. Uh, I mean, we don't need surveys to prove them, but we still do have surveys. And as you can see, um, users uh, expect intelligent communication from companies to make their lives easy, right? Uh, so we see here customers telling us, hey, we get, get frustrated when uh, companies send us messages uh, or emails that are not relevant to me, or it is not personalized to, uh, you know, uh, what I have done with them or what I'm looking for. And we also see people really like when we personalized it, personalize the experience with name, et cetera. And, uh, obviously, people don't want unwanted outreach, but this is uh, in, in addition to the experience that they uh, expect when company uh, reaches out to them through different communication channels, com these customers also expect a very personalized and contextual communication on the website or on the app. Uh, let's say, for example, they click on an email which uh, talks about uh, offer for certain category of products. and the a call to action button leads to a landing page which doesn't talk about that category which is the main landing page they get frustrated because the, the experience now hasn't been consistent people expect uh, the website also to be smart enough to understand who they are and respond to uh, them individually now if you see for example youtube does this uh, most of the apps that they are using it they do it the apps talk personalized per, uh, to uh, personally to each individual user, which means the bar has been set high for us new startups. And even as we begin our journey, we are having to uh, deliver very consistent experience on the app or on the website and on the different communication channels. Now, this has been a very uh, difficult thing to do. Uh, there has been challenges in delivering this consistent experience because you know, we all have uh, uh, two less tech resources all the time. And uh, one of the ma major problems most of the entrepreneurs who are not tech guys might face is to finding a tech co-founder, finding a CTO, finding a tech team, right? And I mean, I, I, I face the same thing too with my startup where uh, it took me at least one year to find a tech co-founder. And uh, for building a tech team is has been the most difficult because we are also working on very limited budgets. And uh, the second problem that we have had in delivering this consistent experience has been that the data gets dispersed, right? We have uh, different channels. We are communicating with the users from, and we have a website, we have an app. Users are uh, 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 interacting with us in so many different ways. And we are not able to really, we don't have, uh, uh, we or we didn't have uh, a place where we could see all this, uh, you know, a, a unified view of what each user is doing. But uh, these have these are today's uh, yesterday's problem because we now have the new age tools and products in the market which offer a 360 degree view of the customers. There are segmentation engines which 
with which you can deeply segment your segment our users based on let's say attributes or any events that they might have been uh, they might have performed on our app or website or even on uh, you know a push notification or emails that we had sent them and further they we also have tools uh, no code tools uh, uh, that uh, you know in the form of nudges or walkthroughs that you could use to handhold your new users uh, maybe use uh, uh, tool tips and highlights to uh, uh, you know take users attention to the different menu items and you can also customize it and show different uh, walkthroughs to different kinds of users which are more relevant to them maybe for example a user might have come to our website for a consultation and uh, we might offer uh, let's say a consultation and few other services in addition we take that user only through the relevant uh, features walk through uh, and we also now have the ability to personalize even the recommendations that we offer the product recommendations or even the whole website experience uh, maybe the landing page or the cta or the uh, you know pro products that you that we recommend etc based on uh, different kinds of users uh, and we could even uh, uh, customize uh, lang the language in which we talk to the user maybe we uh, you know for each uh, users from different states we have a different welcome message so uh, now we have uh, no code tools that make us makes it very easy for us to do all of these personalizations and uh, uh, you know uh, build this intelligence into the website uh, make the communication that users have with our app or website very one on one very human right uh, and these codes need no tech resource uh, a founder could easily even a non tech founder could easily you know uh, integrate this tool and quickly do all of these things and uh, improve uh, engagement how we engage with customers improve communication with customers and uh, which uh, uh, helps us you know improve conversions on our app as well and reduce bounce rate uh, and help users engage with us more and more. Uh, so we, let's we'll just go uh, get into a uh, little bit more details uh, about each of these aspects that uh, the uh, new age tools uh, offer. Netcore is one of the uh, tools that uh, one of the companies which offers all of these tools. So uh, we start connected content, which is your 360 degree user view, right? So this is an example of a dashboard where you uh, this is a user called John Wick. Here we see, uh, you know, all the activities that a user has done on our website, all the activities a user has done on the different communication channels, maybe uh, how, you know, uh, the emails that we sent, the, uh, uh, you know, messages that we sent, and from there, how the user has come onto the app or website and what they have done. We also see the revenue contribution uh, from the user and various other metrics we want to measure against the, each user. We all we can also see all the different products that they have checked out, uh, you know, products that they have liked, etc. And we also have tools which can create these predictive segments based on their, uh, uh, you know, actions on the website and communication channels, which is essentially, you know, AI working for us. And the next aspect of it is uh so what we have connected content now and now we understand we have our communication should be personalized and should be contextual so the first question becomes who do i communicate with when do i communicate and what so first aspect for who is where segmentation comes into picture where uh you know so we understand uh people all all users don't need the same level of engagement all uh users don't need the same type of engagement all people don't need the same, uh, you know, don't uh, need help with same kind of user flows as well. Uh, they each user is on our website for various different things. And from a company's perspective, maybe it is also prudent for a company to pick and choose whom do we engage with and how deeply. Maybe we engage with users that are most likely to convert, uh, you know, more deeply and maybe focus less on the users that are most likely to churn out right uh, and uh, so this is where the segmentation engine comes into picture where you could uh, very easily with uh, create rules use and and or and 
you know uh, segment users based on attributes like let's say the device that they are using the location they are from uh, the time in which they are opening the app or uh, you know various different attributes like this or the different events they have performed on our website or app and as we uh, once we create the user segments now we are able to uh, uh, you know define journeys for these users and uh, define when to send emails or sms or whatsapp uh, communications or any any on any communication uh, channel uh, when do we send these uh, communications and what kind of communication do we send and we are also able to define when to trigger these communications based on actions on the website so let's say only when user performs uh, action one and action two in uh, co consequently then we send some kind of notification to the user so we are able to segment uh, create journeys that are very deep that can take into account every action the user does or doesn't do on our website or app and we don't we, we don't have to now stop at just uh, you know uh, uh, personalizing the communication uh, through the different communication channels but we can also personalize the what we are uh, doing on the app or the website and we can do this without adding a piece of code uh, to our uh, you know uh, app and uh, website which is again with a very easy drag and drop flowchart like ui you could define what kind of nudges or what kind of walkthroughs you want we want to add we could add let's say a feedback form when users uh, uh, give us rating less than for five for for a campaign so we could uh, 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 do very uh, deep in-depth journeys and help users navigate across the app and we can also like uh, personalize the website with a very uh, drag and drop tool again where you we could say hey uh, to the users that are coming from let's say karnataka show welcome text in bangalore or we could uh, uh, even personalize the uh, recommendation uh, pr products that are recommended based on the products that the user has visited before maybe a user has checked out uh, shirts before so the personal the uh, personalized products that we show on the website landing page could be more of shirts so these are some of the things that uh, these tools helps us do and as you seen these tools are really easy to use they are drag and drop and takes absolutely no code uh, which makes our founders lives so much easier right so um, now uh, we are going to talk in depth about uh, some of the metrics that we talked earlier uh, which uh, uh, so which indicate that we have achieved product market fit and uh, the metrics that are really important for growth so uh, we, see, we are, netcore as a company has worked uh, with a lot of startups and a lot of companies uh, helping them improve conversions and retentions for the past 22 years. And we understand some of the top problems that all, most of these companies face. And for different problems, companies have um, you know, uh, uh, used different solutions. Uh, and uh, we now uh, have Mudit, who is the AVP of product solutions at Netcore, to talk about the different, the top uh, uh, metrics that uh, most companies find are bottlenecks and some of the solutions they have implemented to solve those problems for themselves. Uh, so I would like to hand over to Mudit now. Over to you, Mudit. Sure, Sayuja, sure. Thank you so much. Uh, a very good evening to each one uh, present over here. I'll quickly start sharing across my screen. I know I have, I have another uh, 35 to 40 minutes out and I'll try to be as articulative as possible. Uh, so thank you, Sayuja. I think you explained on, uh, you know, how does the data really flow in? How does the unified user view look like? Uh, how easy it is to create, you know, campaigns, engagement campaigns, retention campaigns, uh, you know, reduce the manual efforts and focus more on strategizing. Uh, I would now like to focus on two major problem areas, uh, you know, in the app verse and in the web verse. Uh, and, and how do we really solve for them, right? Uh, so here's problem number one, which is basically your top app problem today, which is retention, right? Uh, when we look at a metric, and this is a metric published by Apps Flyer, one of the top uh, analytics firms out there, uh, they actually mention that uh, the user retention rate uh, on day one, if a user installs the app on day zero, 
uh, is basically 25%. You know, on day seven, the retention rate drops to 10%, which means the uninstalled rate on day one itself is as high as 75%. Uh, and by day zero, uh, by day seven, uh, we've basically lost 90% of our users, right? That's how problematic retention as a problem really is uh, and that we need to solve together, uh, you know, uh, for the industry, right? So uh, the more important problem uh, that really comes out of this retention graph is our users now, uh, you know, really understanding the app or, or really getting to understand the value of your app. Uh, right? Uh, do I decode uh, the value that is there on offer, the USP, uh, the core North Star service that the app has to offer for me? Uh, you know, can we get the users, you know, handhold the users and get the users adopted to what we want them to, uh, be it on the website or be it on the app? Uh, right, especially when we are looking at tier two, tier three adoption, uh, you know, we 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 uh, we need to ensure that users across regions uh, are getting used to our services, uh, getting habituated, can adopt our features, uh, and all of this can happen as quickly as possible uh, with qualitative engagement. Uh, right, uh, for example, if somebody launches a food app, right, if somebody launches Zomato, for example, right. Nobody would purchase Zomato Pro on the first go. They would simply say, hey, the masala dosa that I want to order uh, from Shiv Sagar as a restaurant, does Shiv Sagar as a restaurant actually exist on uh, you know, the Zomato menu? Right? That's the first problem that we need to address, right? Ensuring that the user adds an address and has successfully signed up right would be my core problem you know after the user makes five purchases or six purchases is where i will push the user for a zomato pro subscription uh, right uh, and hence contextual user engagement is very important uh, especially when you're talking about getting users uh, habituated uh, to the services that you have on offer on your app uh, which inevitably will impact your retention as a metric Right. Uh, this is basically the feature adoption funnel that we've been able to create for you. Uh, and, and this is how we are going to solve retention, right? In four simple steps. Question number one that we need to ask ourselves every single day is, are users aware of a feature that I have launched uh, as a brand, as a business, as a product, uh, you know, uh, persona at, uh, you know, for the startup? Have I uh, launched a feature and are users aware of the feature? Right? Our users have users activated themselves on the feature. If you've launched a wallet feature, have users uh, you know activated their wallet with you? Right? Uh, uh, you know, have users signed up with you? Uh, have users, if you're an OTT app, have users watched two to three videos on the app, uh, which are free videos? Um, you know, and, and successfully put in their recommendations on what they would like to see more, right? Uh, ensuring that users are actually using the feature, uh, you know, uh, the core feature that you want them to get habituated to. Uh, and what's more important is ensuring repeat transactions and purchases. Uh, I think that's a problem that we are all aware today. We all want to, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, we all want to kind of solve this problem uh, on repeat purchases, users coming back, uh, the habit loops being created on the app. So using awareness, activation, engagement, uh, and finally retention, I will be able to uh, solve for the feature adoption funnel. Uh, which inevitably will impact my retention as a whole, right? So that's the goal for me. Uh, how do I do this? Uh, we look into a few brand stories that have been successfully, uh, have turned unicorns, have, are, are, are you know, uh, the greatest apps and webs and brands uh, to really look up to today. Uh, there's this story for uh, MPL, which basically has greater than 20, 25 million MAUs uh, today. Uh, now to uh, get to tier two, tier three adoption, one of the core reasons was uh, how do I get the tier two, tier three users to play their first game? It's not easy, right? Right? Everybody has 50 rupees in their wallet. Everybody wants to participate in the IPL contest, right? Everybody wants to play a fantasy game, right? Fantasy cricket, right? In this context. Uh, and, and hence, they had this entire challenge of how do we get users to play in their first game, um, you know? Uh, and hence, as soon as the user launches the app, you know, we basically tell the user, hey, uh, you've got uh, tickets worth rupees 50 free to join the contest. We basically do a tool tip over here. Right uh, now, why do we do a tooltip is because the user might not know what to tap onto, uh, would be confused and complicated with a lot of complex information. Uh, 
uh, right? Daniel Kahneman says it very well, right? When a user is loaded with a lot of complex information, uh, you elevate the options that you want the user to take and the user will take those options, right? The brain wants to use as less processing power as possible. So how do you drive users towards getting the best value of the app uh, and, and ensuring that they do what you want them to do, right? So it does not stop over here, right? Uh, let's say, for example, if your fantasy cricket funnel, right, in this context, in this context, uh, is basically of four to five steps, right? So any let, let let's please understand that any screen or any step could logically be a drop off, right? Once the user clicks on the match that they want to participate in, uh, and once they move on to the next screen, this screen could be a drop off, right? Every screen could be a drop off, and hence I say, hey. You know, you do not know where to tap to select. You tap to select over here to build your wicket keeper team, uh, you know, build your batsmen, bowlers, fielders, and kind of create your entire team, you know. So successfully creating a team, which by the way is not an easy task, you know, on any app, uh, you know, because every app has different ways uh, of, of visualizing elements. Uh, so how do you drive users to kind of get that adopted? Uh, this is the way, you know, using tooltips and nudges and walkthroughs. Uh, you know, for their key funnel of playing the first game on the app uh, is where MPL drove new game discovery and adoption. Uh, they are uh, live with around 315 match journeys, a massive uh, 205 user segments created uh, and, and uh, with around 853 AB tests. Uh, here's another story for, for a ride hailing app in India, uh, the south of India. Uh, they had a very interesting, uh, you know, challenge as well. What was really happening was uh, they had a lot of consumers or customers coming onto the app uh, because their digital acceleration uh, to acquire new users was absolutely high. Uh, but the problem, uh, in, uh, you know, on the other hand, was that they did not have enough drivers to cater to these consumers and customers, right? Uh, that's a very good and bad problem to have uh, genuinely. Uh, and what really happened was they created a very contextual communication. So they had launched this auto confirm rides or pre booking of rides as a feature uh, today that we see in the likes of Uber and Ola today. Uh, but they had launched this feature quite early in the funnel, uh, you know, for, for ride hailing as a vertical. Uh, and, and what they wanted was was if a user can find a ride, no intervention, no engagement required, right? A user found their ride. That's absolutely great. We do not need to intervene. But if a user cannot find a ride, we basically drive the user to go ahead and enable auto confirm as an option. Please remember auto confirm as an option was three to four layers down the hamburger menu which was not easy, right? The design team questioned saying that, uh, boss, if you want us to get the feature on the top of the app, uh, what, is, what are the data points or what are the analytics for it, right? Is this feature really working for us to get it on the top? And they said, using walkthroughs, let's drive users towards auto-confirm, uh, you know, auto-confirming rights, right, on the app. And if this feature works, uh, you know, if this feature really works for us, uh, you know, let, let's go ahead and change the visual and the designs of the app accordingly, right? So as soon as the user could not find a ride, we said, hey, help us find you a ride by turning on auto-confirm. And uh, we said, hey, click on auto-confirm rides and then you know, uh, select the auto-confirm as an option. Their key funnel, which was ride bookings, right? Ride bookings was the key funnel and the reduction, right? The reduction in drop-offs for this particular funnel was down by 11% straight up over a single campaign, uh, right? Because we are engaging with the user when their intent is high, when it matters the most and maybe taking a couple of extra steps. If it gets me to book a ride for myself, uh, I do not have any issues, right? I will go ahead and do that, right? Here is another story for a brand, uh, you know, which is which is a poker brand, uh, right, uh, in India. Uh, the problem that they faced was, again, very, very interesting. Uh, they said, we get a lot of users onto our app. A lot of people organically want to play poker, uh, but nobody knows how to play poker. Right. Uh, and that's why they see a lot of uninstalls and drop offs really happening, um, you know, because people enter into a match, lose a match and then uninstall the app. Right. Uh, if they do not win. Right. Uh, as, as all of us would really do. Right. So what they did was uh, in terms of enlightening the users on how to play poker, as soon as the user launched the app, they created an onboarding overlay. They said, hey, you're new to this app. You might not know what is what, uh, you know, let me get you introduced to the app you know, game cards, how to add balance, how to withdraw cash can be done from this particular section. Uh, you can go ahead and learn how to play poker, 
So if you see, learn the basics of poker here, right? So the user could tap onto next and actually go ahead and look at the entire overlay or just tap onto the section and start learning about uh, poker right from the app, right? We also spoke about referrals on how users could actually go ahead and refer their friends and so on. So a complete overlay, getting the user introduced to how the app really functions and how the app really is, is, is positioned with its elements, with its features uh, that the users could make the best use of. Uh, another app, which was again in, in, a, in a similar space, you know, is currently, uh, you know, they had this entire proposition of how do users take part in tournaments, right? Tonys is what they call them. Uh, people, you know, the users come onto the app, play a one, one off game, play a random casual arcade game. They wanted users to take parts in tournament, take part in tournaments, right? Uh, and using this tooltip, an elevated option, getting the users focus onto that particular section, they saw a 13% adoption of tournaments in one single campaign, uh, right? Uh, so engaging at the right time, engaging and pushing out your uh, value add at the right time to the right segment of users. Uh, after users have played three to four arcade games, they are comfortable is when you would want to push them to tournaments, right? Not on the first go, they would not even know how to play the game uh, because the game is, 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 is very different on, on every single app, right? Uh, so contextual communication, but at the right time, right? Uh, uh, these are far, far greater than the usual channels of uh, notifications and, and uh, communications that you usually use. Uh, you know, when you look at it from a particular perspective, uh, you know, push channels uh, are becoming more awareness driven communications. Uh, today, if I get a notification from Zomato about a biryani that, you know, uh, you know, I should have basis my past purchases uh, might not lead to me purchasing a biryani at that time. Uh, but I would for sure know that if I want to order biryani, which app uh, I would need to go to, right? But when it comes to users having an intent and coming onto your app, it's superlatively important that we engage with them right onto the app, right? Not an in-app notification that comes onto your face and comes onto the screen and it, it, there is some text into it and the user is basically going to close it, right? We all just close that particular uh, pop-up that comes to us, right? Uh, and hence these tooltips, these spotlights tied to elements really guide user and take them through the app, right? Uh, imagine it like, you know, if, if, if there was a support executive that you would call uh, on trying to understand a, how do I use your app or how do I, uh, you know, if, if there's a support uh, real estate assistant, right? Who guides you through, uh, you know, uh, the estate space on, on that you want to purchase, right? Uh, similarly for your millions of users, every single user, uh, you know, uh, every, every single support assistant uh, in the app guiding you towards various sections. Uh, that's the role what a nudge plays, right? Like a support assistant across millions of users, uh, right? Uh, another another case study from one of the top telecommunication apps in India. Uh, you know they wanted to activate wallets. Uh, they had this payment banks uh, payments bank solution wallet solution. Uh, they wanted users to activate and make transactions, pay to their friends. Uh, they even had a two fifty rupees offer if you made your transactions or or transferred money to your friends. Uh, they wanted users to activate their wallets uh, on onto this telecommunication app. Uh, as soon as the user launched the app, we did a tooltip on manage. Uh, the user would click on manage, go ahead and, uh, you know, add up a profile. You know, uh, we had different tooltips and nudges placed accordingly, uh, right? Uh, please put in your questions on the chat. If, if you have any questions, you know, uh, you know, for, for us, uh, we will be more than happy to answer them. Uh, but yes, this is this is the use case that they had wherein, you know, they wanted users to activate their wallets. 60 million plus MEUs and they experienced a 2x increment in wallet updation, uh, right? That's the power of uh, in engaging at the right time using these uh, tool tips, nudges, you know, uh, and so on. They also had use cases like bill payments, like, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, music discover services that they have on their app today uh, in the discover section uh, where, where there are contextual tool tips like, uh, you know, there. Uh, for various different segments of users. Uh, another very fascinating use case for a hyper was for a hyper local content app. Uh, this is this is an app down south, uh, uh, you know, uh, wherein they obviously shell out a lot of content, news, media, articles. Uh, now, the interestingly, you know, the product folks, the business folks, uh, launched a matrimonial service on the app. Imagine, right? You're a news and media app, you're a content app, and you launched a matrimonial service, right? Now you wanted to succeed. 
uh, right now imagine if i come on to the app wanting to read content and i'm suddenly seeing something about patrimony uh, you know why will i sign up right and 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 you know uh, how can i be pushed to sign up right uh, so again using nudges this was possible and this was done uh, so they actually found out that people went to the matrimony section looked at profiles but never created their own profiles themselves never registered themselves so if you aren't available yourself or do not sign up as your profile uh, onto the app uh, how would you get better recommendations or better matches onto the app right uh, and how does it grow as a service right for the brand right uh, so that was that was one proposition that they had uh, over a single campaign right just one campaign uh, you know we we did a control group to 30% of users uh, you know control test uh, is is what we did uh and we did a native language you know in in the very native language for the app we basically said hey tap onto this particular section to set up your uh, to set up your profile right and it was a two form process that people had to fill to sign up for the matrimonial service which was entering your personal and profile details uh, people who clicked on the tooltip and landed on the first page there was an uplift of 25% in the number of clicks uh, uh, users that 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 you know actually went into that section uh, and the number of folks that actually signed up on the final page uh, and clicked on submit and created their profile successfully was another 23 odd percent so you can roughly take another 24% uplift uh, using tooltips on successful profile creations uh, on the hyper local content app right uh, so so cross selling your services uh, you know cross selling a service you know that you have newly launched we are all wanting to become the super app today you know uh, inevitably so how do you constantly ensure your features are adopted and are uh, and, and the numbers are continuously ticking up uh, it might require an early push it might require to get the user habituated uh, but there are ways uh, which we could really drive them to kind of uh, do that right uh, so yeah that's basically on the app was uh, you know uh, the, that we have today uh, any questions please post it uh, into the chat section uh, now problem number 2 is that that we want to really talk about today uh, we've got another 20 minutes and and i'll keep it very articulative as well uh, is for the website right for for the e-commerce problem that we see usually right uh, we all have a bunch of products that we want to take online uh, we want to uh, you know uh, you know sell products online uh the most important problem that we face today is uh, obviously intense competition uh, with the number of brands growing today with the number of uh, online shops that have come on today uh you know product discovery basically becomes a challenge uh, right because the user knows that i have so many options uh, you know my patience levels are also at an all time low right uh, i will look for nike sneakers on amazon and if i do not find it within two pages maximum uh, that too if it's my birthday in the next two weeks uh, i will quickly skip on to a mintra or a flipkart right i will just hop on to multiple portals uh, because i know i have other options so how do you ensure product discovery for users is always at an all time high uh, you know how do you ensure that uh you know your marketing roi is absolutely on top you know because uh, these days with product discovery being a challenge uh, you spend a lot we spend a bunch of uh, cost on acquisition right getting users to the website uh, but the user bounces off as quickly as they come into the website uh, you know the the return on investment for marketing is absolutely at an all time low uh, low you know revenues are obviously low as well uh, and and conversion as a whole does not increase right uh, let alone repeat purchases so where customer acquisition is expensive users leave without transacting you know how do we ensure uh, our engagement is top notch uh, let's let's focus on this entire statement saying that users intent is high and that's why they've come onto your website right that's why they've come onto the website to look at your products and make a purchase right at that particular time when the intent is high when they are on your website how do you ensure that the product experience you know is is absolutely phenomenal uh, right how is on site engagement at at, at an all time high uh, right here are a few key, me key metrics as well uh, the average 90 day retention rate uh, with no personalization is as low as 21% for the web customer for the web users for the web brands uh, Uh, around 1.14% was the average conversion rate before personalization uh, just a 1.14% <clears throat> sorry uh, and and uh, you know uh, most retailers uh, could not bring their cart abandonment rate down uh, below 60% uh, you know if there was no personalization on the website right uh, this is the study that we conducted with forester 
uh, and we published this report by analyzing uh, you know uh, multiple 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 brands and speaking to uh, you know uh, product and growth folks at these uh, organizations uh, so some uh, numbers to really look at here's an interesting story about qtrove right qtrove had this entire problem of low conversions across the website which i think you know uh, is, is a common known problem but but we obviously need to solve that as well uh, there was uh, there was repeat transactions was was a huge issue uh, you know, does the user purchase the second time, the third time, the fourth time, um, you know, people want to try out multiple options, go to multiple uh, websites. So the re revenue generation was low, users were not transacting consecutively uh, and, and uh, the conversions were at an all time low, right? Uh, we basically implemented our AI driven personalized, personalization solution uh, and marketing automation solution. Uh, what we really did was every single website, uh, you know, had these widgets, you have these widgets, right? products specifically for you, new arrivals, best sellers, people bought this when they bought this, right? So you have those recommendation widgets, right? On product listing page, on product display page, on the home page, you know, so we created those different pages, uh, you know, we, we created those different widgets, we personalized products, uh, you know, into those widgets, uh, you know, for various brands, right? And, and we did it for Kyotrov as well. In fact, if you look at this particular pop-up, right? Uh, this is an exit intent pop-up instead of showing a pop-up that says give me your email id and mobile number we said hey here are four products that you are most likely to purchase you know why don't you you know kind of look at look at these products in fact we've seen purchases users wanting to exit the website and when we show these pop-ups uh, you know, uh, users actually tap onto that product and go ahead and, and, and make purchases, right? We've seen it for, for one of the largest watch brands in Europe uh, that is currently working with us. Uh, so, so, you know, recommendation of uh, products, uh, but what's more important is these products are not recommended by a marketeer. These products are recommended by an AI and ML engine. So what we've done is we've basically uh, powered these recommendations using an AI and ML engine, and we directly saw an uplift of 18% in revenue, right? And we were implemented across the home, the PLP, the PDP, the checkout page, across the user journey uh, is where these widgets were implemented. Uh, so the AI ML engine basically ensures that one-to-one -one recommendations are built uh, and, and users are shown recommendations at a one-to-one -one level. See, a marketer can, you know, segment only up until a certain level, right? Uh, you know, you could only create segments on a platform up until two, three, four, six, seven, eight, ten 10 layers down, right? Uh, but but uh, the user intent or the user uh, uh, requirements can only be fulfilled by an AI and ML engine, right? That produces recommendations uh, in absolute real time and at the scale of one to one, right? Uh, they had this another problem wherein uh, the dormant customers uh, would make only one purchase a month. In fact, even after a month passing by, uh, they would not come and make uh, you know any purchases again. Uh, so they basically ran a "We miss you," right? "We miss you" campaign to get users back onto their platform uh, with one-to-one -one relevant product recommendations. So what we were doing is our AI ML engine was producing product recommendations one-to-one. -one. We took those product recommendations pushed it onto the website. We also pushed it onto emails. We can also push it onto e app push notifications. In this case, we pushed it onto emails and we pushed it onto the website. And that's exactly where, uh, you know, uh, you know, the, the cumulatively the entire revenue contribution uh, through the platform was 18%, uh, 12% plus 6%, 6% was through the personalization engine uh, and 12% was through uh, the, the entire AI ML capability uh, that was deployed for, uh, you know, QDrop. Uh, another brand, uh, you know, one of the most famous brands as well, uh, you know, they had this problem, Zimbabwe had this problem of relevant product discovery, uh, you know, product recommendations were not apt, uh, they were very generalized, right, that's the term that, that we are really stuck today at, right, how do we constantly personalize, right, it is not possible for a marketeer, uh, and that's exactly where an AI and ML engine really comes in and hops in today, right, so there are low conversion rates that they faced, there were higher drop-offs, higher bounce rates, uh, product discovery was a problem, right? Users would come onto the website, uh, but you know, after a few pages, they would drop off. So we deployed our AI engine, uh, you know, named Raman, uh, you know, uh, named after the great Mr. Raman. Uh, we basically created these personalized widgets, uh, these product landing pages uh, across the website, uh, wherein users could go ahead and, uh, you know, 
uh, you know, you know, uh, look at their recommendations completely personalized for uh, her, or, you know, on, onto the website, right? Uh, there was a straight up uplift of 7.5x uh, in the marketing ROI and what they spent uh, into the solution, right? Uh, similarly, once upon a trunk, uh, you know, one of our closest customers and, and customer uh, who's been working across, uh, you know, your uh, customer engagement and, and personalization and product recommendations, uh, they saw an uplift in revenue within 90 days, uh, a 28% uplift. Uh, the next generation also wants a UX that's, uh, you know, uh, that's, that's fairly intuitive, right? They are used to using Instagram and Tinder, uh, right? So you can create such product recommendations on uh, you know, uh, for your website, you know, on your mobile website, you can create this Tinder like user interface uh, for your mobile website, uh, you know, uh, people liking a product, disliking a product and so on and so on, right? You could create a personal boutique page. It could actually say, hey, my, uh, you know, let's say, for example, my uh, brand X page, right? So let's say, for example, my once upon a trunk page uh, or my Q-Trove page, which has accumulation of products that the user is most likely going to purchase one-to-one. -one. So it's a menu uh, that's built for every single user individually, right? Again, 28% uplift that uh, once upon a trunk really experienced. Uh, hope this hope this gives some sense to the engagement and retention uh, and, and the entire marketing verse and, and how do we solve for it. There are various tools and solutions available out there, uh, you know, that, that could, that could uh, you know, uh, that could cater, cater to MarTech verse. Uh, you know, but but we really wanted to focus on the core problems that as users we face today, uh, and as uh, you know, brand problems we've been able to solve and highlight. Uh, just to share a few insights with you on the best practices that one could really do. Uh, you know, we've listed down a few essentials that we've learned from our customer success teams uh, from various brands. Uh, you know, on on their inputs directly from these brands. One is your personalization is super important. Uh, it can lift your push notification open rates by 800%. Uh, always personalize the content of your push notifications. Uh, you know, uh, build segments of users. Uh, you know, always add that attribute of saying hi first name or, you know, uh, we've noticed you like Chinese dishes or, you know, we noticed you like drama as, as a content and so on and so on. It definitely gives you an amplification of, of, of 4x on your open rates uh, as compared to generic promotional campaigns. Uh, how many communications should you send across channels, across email, SMS, app push, web push, uh, news around uh, three to four times in a day, fashion three to four times in a day, travel two to three times a day. Uh, people don't travel as much, obviously, right, until and unless it's corporate travel. So, uh, you know, you might want to restrict your communications there as compared to a fashion or a news portal. Uh, health and fitness, again, three to four times in a week, especially uh, over the past uh, a year and a half is what we've noticed, uh, is where the communication looks fairly good enough to go. Uh, and this is, by the way, across your notifications, emails, and, and SMS. So a frequency capping for the day. Uh, always ensure that your questions that you keep in your in-app notifications are not greater than one to two questions. Uh, because as soon as we see four to five questions as a consumer, we ourselves want to skip that, right? Because we do not have the energies uh, after long days to really give feedback, right? So one to two, to the point, crisp articulative questions uh, that could really make your feedback actionable. And, and you could also, uh, you know, uh, write back to those uh, segments of users uh, on, on saying that, okay, we could work on two problems, but we've really uh, uprooted the problems and solved them, uh, right? So in, in all of your surveys, uh, asking one to two tight questions, uh, clearly knitted around uh, the problems that you think uh, users are experiencing. Uh, this is what you uncover about them uh, once you get them, uh, you know, onto your app. Uh, use deep links as much as possible. Uh, if you're doing an Instagram ad, and I think we all know about it, but just to reiterate, uh, you know, if you show an Instagram ad for Nike sneakers, and if the user clicks on the Nike sneakers, the last thing we want is for the user to come onto the app and be staring at the home page, right? Because the user is going to go nowhere but get lost, uh, get lost inside the app, or search for something very, very random, uh, right? So always use deep links. It accounts for sixty-six percent rise in conversions. Uh, see, basically, when you use a deep link, you are skipping the home page and the search page. You are directly going to the product display page. Uh, and, and the funnel conversion is not far from there, right? That's why deep links work very well. Uh, great tools, uh, you know, such as, uh, you know, Branch and Apps Flyer that really do this very well today, uh, you know, get you those deep links as well. Uh, 
and tie up that entire story for you as well. Sixty-seven uh, percent of all emails opened on mobile. So uh, you know, we all know we all open emails today on mobile. The Gmail app, we all have them. So subject line should be not more than greater than twenty-five to thirty characters. Uh, it could be a single CTA, not multiple CTAs. Uh, the call to actions could be not greater than two to four words. Uh, and, and one of the most important points that I wanted to bring up in the conversation uh, is your push notifications, right? We all know for a matter of fact, I think the number is out there. Your push notification CTR is just three to 5%, right? But the user awareness index when they are on your web, ar, uh, web and app is basically 10 to 15 X, right? We have to ensure that when the user's intent is high, when they are on site, you know, using uh, solutions like which I showed, uh, you know, product experience, personalization, engagement, uh, it always ensures that the communication is absolutely contextualized, personalized, right? Our product experience is top notch. We are guiding the users, building user habit, uh, driving users towards the right sections of the app so that they get maximum value out of it. Uh, and this could be website also, right? You could build these tool tips on the website as well, uh, right? And also using product recommendations, uh, with the plethora of products that we sell today, it could be millions of products, uh, but the right products are being showcased to the users every now and then. Uh, the end goal is to obviously increase the customer lifetime value uh, and increase repeat transactions, right? A one-time purchase can always be done and can be pushed, uh, but to ensure repeat transactions organically is where we want to get to. Uh, you know, when it comes to a great product market fit and, and you know, uh, brand recognition. So how do we ensure our on-site engagement is absolutely uh, top notch? Uh, here are brands that have been using us, uh, you know, you name it, and, and, and we've been fortunate to be working with them. Uh, and I've seen direct uplift in revenue. So our, our algorithms for personalization are basically directly, uh, you know, focused on uh, generating uh, conversions, right? They're directly attributed uh, to conversions, they are built in such a way. Uh, so, so uh, all of these brands have seen direct uplifts. You know, they've been using multiple tools and they've checked and cross-checked the values again and again through Google Analytics, through our platforms. Uh, they've seen direct uh, uplifts in revenues, and and these stories have been published uh, on the Netcore Cloud website as well. Uh, brands like Ease My Trip, Kotak, Nike, Max Life uh, see direct impact in revenues. In fact, for Nike Fashion. 50% revenue uh, increase was seen through web push notifications as a channel uh, using smart web notifications. Uh, uh, you know, uh, again, you know, uh, for Max Life Insurance, we are live across various channels uh, like web push, uh, emails, SMSs, uh, and and uh, you know, uh, cumulatively we see an 11% increase uh, in sales, direct sales, right for them. Uh, you know, Star Online has seen another uplift when it comes to getting more app installs, uh, you know, uh, on, onto uh, the, for their app. So they have a web message that basically uh, drives users to go ahead and download the app for Star uh, Online Malaysia. Uh, you know, Meru Caps basically saw an app stickiness increase by 3x. Uh, they implemented the app SDK. Uh, they saw a, a reduction in app churn. We also have an AIML engine for engagement and retention. Uh, which basically reduced their churn by 36%. Uh, TVS Credit also saw a reduction in churn by 26%. Uh, another story that we've built recently. Uh, the brands of the brands like Aku Pintar and EdTech brand, uh, you know, also uh, have seen direct, uh, you know, increment in, in loan applications for students uh, by 9.7% again. Uh, and we've seen there are a lot of other stories as well. Uh, the likes of Baiju's, uh, you know, Khata Book, uh, uh, Mintra uh, today use us, uh, Flipkart use us today for various engagements, communications. Uh, we've been proud to be a part of their journey as well. Uh, just to quickly sum it up, uh, this is the scale that we work today at. Uh, 5 million notifications per minute. We have now transitioned to a Vertica database. Uh, five second segmentation average time, uh, 50 billion events handled per month. Uh, you know, uh, approximately, uh, uh, you know, uh, apologies for the typo, but it's 70% now. 70% uh, odd volumes of email and APAC are delivered through our platform today. Uh, you know, uh, you know, and, and we deliver, uh, you know, millions of notifications today uh, per day uh, across various brands. Here are the few brands, uh, you know, uh, accumulation of brands that today work with us from the likes of Tommy to uh, Tommy Hilfiger, Dan UB, Payfair, Sun and Sun Sports, SCB. Uh, eight of the 10 banks in India work with us today as well. Uh, Gulf News, uh, you know, uh, Shemaru, Airtel, Dream 11, My Team 11, Poker Bazi, Ramme Bazi, uh, you know, uh, Baiju's Mintra Khata Book, as, as, as I mentioned earlier as well, MPL, uh, we've seen uh, as well. Uh, on, on Gartner Peer Insights, you could check this out yourself as well. Uh, on the Gartner Peer Insight website, uh, we are listed as one of the top uh, three vendors when it comes to, uh, uh, you know, user engagement and retention platforms. 
uh, rated at around 4.5. It's, it's become 4.6 a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but yeah, uh, 4.5 odd uh, from 103 reviews uh, by, uh, spoken by marketeers themselves. Uh, yes, uh, so what we'll do is we, we'll share a sign up link. We would love to have an interaction with each one of you for your for the brand that you're building. Uh, for, for the ecosystem that you're building, uh, you know, and we would love to have an interaction, uh, a conversation around uh, how can we really solve the problem of, uh, you know, getting more user activation, engagement and retention uh, for your, uh, you know, for your platform, for your uh, startup. Uh, Sayuja has put down a link. Uh, you just need to sign up and push in your details over there. Uh, and we'd love to get in touch with you and hear you out completely. Uh, Sayuja, if you'd want to sum it up, sum the note up with a few quick words. Hey, thank you, Mudet. Hi, everyone. Um, so, uh, so we uh, today we saw about saw a lot about uh, uh, different personalizations uh, that we could do on our website, on the app, on and on our uh, different communication channels. Uh, so, and I think Mudet also spoke about a lot of big companies uh, uh, that have uh, used these solutions uh, but then these are not uh, just solutions for all of these big companies even uh, for uh, startups that are uh, you know one or two months old uh, we have we find the need to start communicating with users uh, you know uh, in a more personalized way right so uh, for example MPL uh, uh, started personalizing uh, on their app uh, uh, when they were about two months old and now uh, they have grown big and they are still continuing to do that. So uh, we have launched uh, our startup program, the conversion retention and engagement program, specifically for uh, companies uh, that have, uh, you know, monthly active users, even from few hundreds to uh, the maximum upper limit is uh, one lakh for the startups program. And uh, as a part of the program, we have uh, designed packages that are very specific to uh, problems a small startups face. Uh, you know, the tools that uh, one needs uh, for the uh, first set of problems that we start facing uh, that we uh, need to take care of. Well, like uh, Mudit said, it is it could be your onboarding, it could be uh, retention, uh, or it could be your conversion, which are all you know major problems. When I, uh, so I uh, these are the same problems that we faced uh, when I was. Uh, uh, as an entrepreneur, the uh, same problems that I faced, right? So, uh, so in addition to these packages, we are also we also have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, conversion program where uh, you know we could get on a one-on-one -on -one call, we could go through your app or uh, website and uh, do a do an audit uh, uh, in terms of how to improve the funnels or conversions, uh, etc. So you could sign up for that as well. So because you know, I, I understand while we have a lot of uh, content online, uh, you know, videos or webinars like uh, uh, what we are having now, which talk about the general fund of doing things, which are also very important. Uh, I understand we are also looking for one-on-one uh, -on -one advice or feedback on what we are trying to do. Right. So uh, uh, we we could uh, uh, always uh, you know uh, uh, connect and discuss that, you could sign up for that. I have posted the link uh, in the chat. So yeah, looking forward to connect with you. Uh, thank you for uh, joining today's session. Thank you so much, uh, Shayuja and Mudit. Uh, this was indeed very detailed and uh, I'm sure a very important masterclass for the entrepreneurs there. Um, do check out the links posted by Shayuja and uh, thanks for joining us today. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a happy weekend. Thank you, Mr.